in this video, I am sharing my complete guide step-by-step -step on how to deliver the perfect sales discovery and demo conversation that closes. The sales discovery conversation, it's the most important part of the entire sales process, yet 99% of salespeople fumble the conversation because it takes the most skill. If you follow the frameworks, the word tracks, use the templates I'm gonna provide and share in this video, you will have north of a 40% close rate on your sales discovery and demo conversations. Awesome, we have a sales discovery demo conversation set up with a prospect, they showed up, we're off to a good start. Step number one, we need to share an agenda, an upfront contract to kick that call off. You as the salesperson or the leader, you're driving the car, the prospect is in the back seat and is a passenger. You need to give them an idea of the directions for that ride, what you plan to accomplish on that call. What this does, number one, it shows you're a professional salesperson and you're prepared. And number two, more importantly, it keeps you in control of that conversation. If you don't show up with an agenda, with an upfront contract, the prospect can take control of that call and steer it off the road. Here's the agenda that I share at the start of every single call. You guys can tweak this for your business. Chris, I have this down for 30 minutes. I don't think this conversation is gonna take the entire time, but how are you on time, Chris? Any hard stops I should be aware of? Awesome, here is what I was looking to accomplish in the next 25 minutes or so. Of course, wanna get your buy-in and feedback towards this game plan. It's important, Chris, before I hop into the demo portal, that I first get a good understanding on how you folks are currently managing and securing your devices today, some of the challenges around that, and really what you're looking to accomplish with this project. That way when I share out my screen, hop into the demo portal, that portion of the conversation can be tailored to your specific use cases. At the end of the conversation, Chris, I would like us to be in a position where you're either interested and we schedule a good next step that makes sense for you and your team, or you're not interested, you let me know, you're not gonna hurt my feelings so we can avoid wasting time. That's what I was looking to accomplish in the next 30 minutes. Chris, this is your time. I'm super flexible. What would you like to add to that agenda to make sure this is a productive conversation today? That's how I kick off all of my sales discovery and demo conversations, that first conversation with the prospect. I'm sharing with them what I plan to accomplish on the call. Obviously, I'm asking for their buy-in and feedback towards that plan. And the last part is so crucial, the upfront contract. By the end of this conversation, I would like us to be in a position where you're either interested and we schedule the next step or you're not interested, you let me know. What this is telling the prospect is at the end of this conversation, it's ending one of two ways. If you like it, we're scheduling the next meeting. If we're not scheduling the next meeting, it's because you're not interested. I'm not following up with you and I'm taking you out of pipeline. You need to start your conversations with the possible outcomes and get them to agree helps you stay in complete control of that call. Step number two, discovery. It's now time to ask questions, to understand their situation, what they're looking to accomplish, understand if there's a need or a problem you could solve, and see if your product or service might be the right fit. Now, there's two different opportunities in sales. There's outbound opportunities and inbound opportunities. How you approach these opportunities is very different. Let's take outbound first. Outbound, maybe an SDR, cold call to prospect, and successfully booked a meeting with that prospect. With outbound, that prospect does not have active pain. They most likely don't have an idea of what they're looking to accomplish with your product or service. If I go right into an outbound opportunity with discovery and start peppering that prospect with questions, they're gonna be pissed off. They're not gonna like that. I, as the salesperson for outbound, need to earn the right to ask questions and then start with pain. How you do that is with a discovery prompter. A discovery prompter is a short educational narrative about the problem or opportunity your product solves designed to get your buyer talking. You will deliver this prompter right after your agenda and upfront contract. Here's an example of something I might say on one of my sales discovery and demo calls to kick off that outbound discovery portion of the conversation. Chris. Typically, whenever I meet with folks like you who head up IT for a business, they're facing a few problems 
when it comes to managing and securing their devices. Number one, the first problem they might have, it's a manual process to set up devices today for employees. It's taking me 90 minutes to set up an image, a single Windows laptop. It's taking me 47 minutes to set up one iPhone for a new employee. Where setting up devices for employees, it's just taking too long, it's super annoying. The second problem they might have is they don't have a way to control how their employees are using their devices. They hand over a device to a new employee and say, hey Stephanie, you can only use this iPhone for these two corporate approved applications and email, nothing else. Next thing you know, Stephanie has downloaded TikTok and Instagram and not being productive on that phone. The third problem they might have is they don't have a way to protect the corporate data on a device if they're lost, stolen, or hit with a malware or a phishing attack. But I don't know, Chris, how much of that sounds like your world and what I missed that you're focused on. I'm gonna end it with that question. That discovery prompter right after the agenda earns the right to ask questions. Once I earn the right, I can then start with paying for those outbound conversations. Now for inbound opportunities, that prospect has active pay. They have an idea of what your product or service could potentially help them with, a problem they're having that they're looking for you to solve. They're far along in their sales process. They're typically in the evaluation phase. They've already had conversations for probably three or four of your competitors. If I were to start with the discovery prompter, that's not gonna kick that conversation off the right way. They wanna get right into it. How you kick off an inbound discovery conversation is with a question like this. Chris, can you walk me through what you're looking to accomplish by looking into XYZ solution. Now, once you understand where the prospect is in the buying journey, is it an inbound opportunity or an outbound opportunity? You could start crafting your questions and keyword here is crafting. The language you use is super important here to get long detail responses. How you get longer detail responses from your prospects when you're asking them questions is start your questions with the phrases. Help me understand, walk me through, tell me more about. Starting questions with these phrases. I start all my questions, a lot of my questions, with these phrases. The longer, more detailed responses that can help you throughout that sales discovery and demo conversation. Awesome, you did a great job in the sales discovery portion of the conversation. You uncovered pain, understand what they're looking to accomplish. You believe that your product or service might be the right fit. It's now time to transition from the discovery portion of the conversation into the demo of your product or service. Before you hop into your demo, this is a very important step. You need to summarize everything you learned from the prospect before hopping into the demo. What this does, guys, number one, it shows the prospect you were actively listening throughout that conversation. And number two, it tells the prospect, hey, the demo you're about to see is not going to be like the demo you've seen from every other salesperson. This is going to be specific to what you're looking to accomplish and your specific use cases. This is not going to be a general generic demo like every other salesperson. Use this word track. Chris, before hopping into the demo, I want to recap what I've learned so far. Your challenges, make sure we have a full understanding of what you're looking to accomplish with this project so I know exactly what I need to show in the demo. And then I'm gonna look at my notes and share everything I learned and ask if there's anything that I missed. As you're pulling up the demo to share out the screen for the prospect, you wanna validate the prospect is in the right spot. This is a good use of their time. Use this phrase. Chris, based on what you told me, what you're looking to accomplish with this project, we will do a great job partnering up and accomplishing your use cases. Now it's time for the demo. I don't care what your product is. I do not care. Every demo needs to follow the same framework. It's very simple. You demo to the prospect's problems and that is it. You're not going through all 76 features of the demo. You demo to their specific use cases, specific problems. That's it. The phrase we can also overwhelms buyers. Solve Exactly. Before moving into the next phase of how to successfully deliver a demo that closes, I created the ultimate sales discovery and demo guide. It's 28 pages, word track packed, 
template filled, no fluff, all actionable tips. I follow this guy to a T and that's why in 2023, I have a 42% close rate on all my sales discovery and demo conversations. If that sounds at all interesting, you can check out that guide in the link in the description. For demoing, show the most powerful feature first. Most SaaS sellers, most tech sellers, they do a ramp up demo where they're building up to that top feature the prospect is looking for. That's not how you do it. Whatever that top feature is that solves their biggest problem that you found in the discovery conversation, show that feature at the very start of the demo. As you were demoing, a few pro tips. Always frame the pain a feature solves before showing it. For example, Chris, you mentioned earlier in the conversation that activation lock, it's a huge issue when it comes to managing your corporate issued iOS devices. Here's how we solve that issue. Show the feature. Constantly tell stories. You need to have fun, be a bit entertaining, take some risks, add some showmanship into your demos. Every other demo this prospect is seeing from salespeople, it's boring. Share stories, relevant stories, for each feature you show in the demo. The discovery doesn't end when the discovery conversation is over and we move to demo. Discovery never ends until the deal is closed. You need to keep doing discovery throughout the demo. So whenever I'm sharing a feature with the prospect, I'm asking questions like, how does this compare to how you're tackling that today? To what extent do you find that useful? To what extent is this resonating so far? Keep asking questions until the deal is closed. Awesome, you just delivered a successful demo. You demo to the prospect's specific use cases. You kept that demo super tight. You solved exactly. You showed the most important feature first. You told stories. You asked great questions. Discovery never ends. It's now time to transition to the close of the call. How you transition to the close of the call is you ask this question. Chris, what else were you hoping to see or learn today that I brushed over or did not touch on it all yet. That's gonna ensure that they saw everything they needed to see in the demo portion of the conversation. Once that's verified, ask this question. Before we talk about pricing and next steps, what do you think, Chris? You think this is a viable option to solve the issues X, Y, Z, A, B, C, one, two, three, that we spoke about at the start of the call? I'm asking there, is this the right fit? I might also ask, what excited you the most about what you saw today? Once I get confirmation that my product is a viable option for the prospect, I share pricing. When I share pricing, and you might be thinking, whoa, 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 you share pricing on the first call? Yes, you always share pricing on the first call. If you don't share pricing on the first call, that's going to piss that prospect off. They need to know pricing. That's one of the top things they need to know. Even if it's just an idea, they're going to share it. You're gonna keep it super tight. Chris, for your use cases, what you're looking at price-wise is $5 per device per month with a one-time setup fee of 1,500 bucks for onboarding. And I'm gonna shut up. And hopefully, I'm gonna get some feedback and hear their thoughts on what they think of my pricing. After you receive feedback on pricing, say this. Chris, prior to recommending the next step, it's important that we are aligned with your timeline and understand how you folks purchase technology like this. Can you walk me through when is the absolute latest you would want something like this implemented? And if you folks do want to move forward with this, does anyone else on your team need to review the product or the pricing before we get a yes? What these questions do, it's important that I understand timeline for forecasting purposes and it's important that I understand authority. Who has the authority to sign on the dotted line? I don't wanna be caught off guard in six months when I ask for the sale and the person who I'm asking to sign doesn't have the authority. I can't get happy ears when I understand that, yes, we're a viable option. They're good on the pricing. You need to keep doing discovery, understand timeline and authority. Once you understand timeline and authority, you can now recommend the next step whether it's a proof of concept kickoff call, maybe it's a meeting next week to review with someone else on the team, to review pricing with the finance department, whatever that looks like. You're gonna send the calendar invite while the prospect is still on the call. Make sure they confirm they received it and make sure 
they hit accept. Once that happens, you just deliver a killer, killer sales discovery and demo conversation that will have a good chance of closing. If you follow these steps, if you follow the guide in the description that I put together, it's everything in this video times 100. Templates you could send, email templates. Word tracks you could use. This times 100. Check it out in the description. I guarantee in six months, guarantee you will have north of a 40% close rate.